Hey, Dan here, and in this video, we are looking at why passion pays if you are an ENFP or INFP. Why not only will you have a more fulfilled, probably happier, and probably less stressful life if you follow your passions, but you're gonna get paid. You're gonna get the big bucks, and I wanna break this down for you. If you don't know already, I do a lot of work coaching with freelancers and entrepreneurs, and this is something I cover a lot and have a ton of experience in. It is an absolute game changer. When you change your mindset to realize not only will you be happier following your passion, but you're probably going to make more money in the long run. That's a pretty awesome mindset to take on, is it not? So let's explore that in this video. So something I hear a lot from people is this internal debate they're having about whether to follow their passion and be happy or get a job where they can make money and have a good income. In my experience, the people who really have a passion they want to be following, if they are ENFPs or INFPs, who settle for a job they're really not that into, they end up with neither. They don't really end up making a ton of money in this job they're not that into. Hmm. That doesn't make sense. We've learned in society that taking a job you don't like and struggling should financially reward you. Does that really make a lot of sense though? Let's think about basic economics. When something is good, people spend money on it. When something is bad, people generally don't like it or spend money on it. So as someone who is doing a job that you don't really want to do, what are the odds that in the long run, I'm not talking about the first few months, first few years where you can fake it, but over 10, 20 years, what are the odds that you're going to be good at that job that you don't really like doing? Probably not very high, right? On the other hand, what if you were to pursue that passion? If you were to maybe start your own business, become a freelancer, or pursue the arts, and you really loved it, and you obsessed over it, like every day you're freaking working on it and getting better and pouring your heart and soul into it. And you have no stress because even if you got smoked by a bus that day, you would die happy knowing you were doing what you were meant to be doing. And each and every day you kept working on this thing and you became better and better and it wasn't faking it, it wasn't stress, it was just what you loved doing and what you were already naturally good at. Hmm. I wonder what would happen over a couple years. Maybe not the first six months or the first year when most people quit, but a couple years, five years maybe even, if you kept pursuing this thing that you love doing and have a passion for and were just always driven to do, I wonder what would happen over a decade or so of applying yourself. You think you'd become good? Maybe the kind of good that people pay incredibly large amounts of money for? Yeah, quite possibly, quite possibly. But I'm, I'm being crazy here. I know, I know. It probably, like just logically, it makes more sense to get a job at a bank that you don't like doing, surrounded by people who are driven by things that don't drive you, like status, significance, material possessions. It totally makes sense to go work with them doing something you don't really like that much in an environment of ethics you don't really agree with instead of that whole passion thing that you really love doing and would be internally driven by and would just absolutely be enthralled with. Probably I'm speaking crazy here because honestly, if, if you didn't make more money pursuing crappy jobs that steal your energy and your soul, and for some people, let's be very clear here, for a lot of types, these are not crappy jobs. I'm speaking to ENFPs and INFPs. For other people, these are their good jobs. And if they had to sit at home and paint all day, they would want to jump off a bridge, right? But for you, these are crappy jobs. Why would they actually end up paying you better in the very long run? Maybe in the short run, like of course, right? You finish university or you're in your mid twenties, let's say, which probably, especially if you're in Europe, you haven't even finished university yet, but you're starting out where are you going to get paid more? pursuing your artistic dream, starting your own business in the first year, or going and working for a huge corporation. 
you're probably gonna earn more at the corporation, absolutely, right? So year one versus year one, you're going to earn more money with some kind of a nine to five job most of the time. Year two, year three, what kind of raises are you getting at that job? Are you getting an increase of maybe 5% a year, 10% a year? I mean, that's a pretty good raise from my understanding. I don't really know a lot about jobs, but from what I'm told, the 10% a year raise would be pretty awesome. How does that work in the long run? When I started as a freelance writer, my first year was relatively rough. I, I maybe made, I'd honestly have to look through, I'd be totally guessing now, but I maybe made like $20,000 or something, maybe a bit more than that in the first year. And it was a bit of a struggle to say the least. I started out charging $16 an hour. Now, if I was at a normal job, I'd probably be earning $30 an hour, consistently like 40 hours a week. I was earning 16 with my first client, like four hours a week. Not exactly lucrative. I wasn't exactly driving down the main boulevard in my you know, Mercedes convertible and pressing the ladies. But year two, one year in, I was bordering on $100 an hour. And by about 18 months in, depending on the client and the arrangement and all that, I was charging between $125 and $150 an hour for my work. Now, I was gonna say I'm not good at math, but I'm actually really good at math. I was like, I'm not good at math, but that's like an increase of what, 700% raise? That's a pretty good raise over an 18 month period, I would say. And this is, now that was maybe a bit, I don't know, I don't wanna say everyone will have the same kind of growth, right? Part of what helped me is I had a bit of business experience already, and I was a good copywriter, I was really good at what I was doing, I think. But that's not uncommon to see those kind of leaps. When I look around all my entrepreneurial friends, it's kind of the same thing, like the first year or two is a bit rough. You're not always bringing in the mad bucks. You're a little stressed, not because it's a different stress. Like when you work a job you don't like, I remember this feeling, it's like a dread stress. Like, oh, I've got to go into the office again. That Chris guy, that asshole I sit beside, he's, ugh. It's like a dread and it's kind of coming from your soul. Like, I don't want to do this. When you work for yourself, the stress is more like, oh, this is awesome, I'm super excited. How am I gonna to eat today? Ah, oh, crap, I don't know how I'm gonna afford food today. But I'm super excited and this is fun and I'm gonna find a solution. It's kind of a different stress, right? And personally, I would prefer that other stress. But anyhow, the first couple years have some of that stress, but then you change and the money starts to come in and the money doesn't come in like it does on a corporate gig where it's 5%, 10% raise a year or whatever it can massively accelerate. I mean, I've seen friends go from 20,000 a year to 100,000 a year. I wouldn't bank on that. I'm not throwing that out as some case study of what's gonna happen to you, but the increases are huge. And because you work for yourself, you're doing your own thing. You're in charge of your own destiny with it and you can find ways to really scale and grow and you're always the one in charge of your income. So same thing I imagine happens selling your own art and that sort of thing. It's probably really hard in the first couple of years, but at some point you hit scale. And I don't mean scale like some tech startup, but scale where enough people know about you and you're confident enough and you're good enough, like your quality is getting better and better. And then suddenly things can really blow up. Now in a second, I wanna share a bet that I would take 10 times out of 10 before I do, be sure to watch to the end of this video. I'm gonna share a free set of training I have all about working for yourself. You're gonna love this stuff. I'm gonna share that at the end, but here's that bet I would take. 10 times out of 10, I would bet that if you take an ENFP or INFP and over a 10 year period, one is going like a corporate kind of gig and the other is really doing their own thing, full in, no doubt, no lack of commitment back and forth, oh, I don't know what I should do, but full in, that over a 10 year period, the person doing their own thing is going to come out better financially. They're gonna be less stressed, they'll be spending less money, and probably have a lower cost of living, but even all that aside, I would venture that they may end up making a lot more money as well doing their own thing. 
The odd exception is side if someone happens to be like a genius stock trader or something. But that's not really our thing, you know, the high emotion financial investing, not so much for us idealists. So if that's true, why don't more people go that route? Well, there's a few reasons. One, I'm going to say society. I'm going to be that guy blaming the man, blaming society. It's not some weird conspiracy, but most people are uh, S types and most people are like uh, J types where they want to have structure and they want consistency and stability. And generally, that is what our society looks like and what we're raised in. So we get raised being told like, this is what you want, you know, steady job, steady paycheck, don't take a risk. Also, most people don't know that many successful artists or entrepreneurs. When I grew up, I didn't know any, at least that I knew of. Maybe my parents had some, they were like hiding in the closet, but I had no model of what it would like to be a successful entrepreneur or an artist or something. That just didn't exist. And there's a few reasons for that. One is it's not a high percentage of the population because most people don't go for it. But the second thing is that usually those people are going to stick with each other. Like if I'm a successful painter, I'm not like, oh man, I should go hang out with those bank tellers and tell them all about my awesome life traveling the world. I bet those bank tellers have great stories they can share with me. That'll be a fun Friday night. All right. The last reason I would say, and this does segue into the training I want to talk about here, is that most people don't have the support. They don't know they're on the right track or they don't even know what is possible. So they kind of get an inkling like, oh, I'd like to work for myself a bit. Maybe I'll try this out. And then they get into it a few months. They don't really know what to do. And they're not really sure they're on track because there's no one in their life telling them like, yeah, you're doing the right thing. It takes a while. Keep going. So they end up kind of giving up, quitting. They talk to a family member who has no clue about pursuing a passion and they say, well, if it's tough, maybe you should quit and go and take a job or do whatever, right? And that leads me to this training I want to share. I'll have a link in the description and a card pop up. It's a free video series I want to share with you as well as a webinar I've filmed all about pursuing your passion, particularly around freelancing. So that could be writing, design, uh, creating websites, anything like that or like marketing, consulting, things like that, as well as coaching, which could be life coaching. It could be business coaching. It could be some kind of very interesting coaching, like how to be healthier or have more energy or something that you have a lot of expertise in that you could connect with other people and help them in that area of their life. Check that out. It's totally free training. And I think if you're kind of on the fence or you've started working for yourself, this is a big one. If you've started working for yourself and then kind of lost your momentum, maybe you even gave up temporarily and went back to a job or something, then the second video I'm going to share with you is a game changer. It will totally bring you back to the playing field. The first video will explain all about actually how do you kind of think about working for yourself and what you should do. And the third video is all about follow through and how do you actually hit that big income? You know, I talked about the hundred plus dollars an hour. How do you actually go to that from the $20, $30 an hour range? So click those links, check it out. You are going to have to put in your name and email, but come on, it's me. You can trust me. Seriously though, it's really good stuff. I think you'll enjoy it. And that's it. If you haven't already hit like, subscribe, all that, I publish new videos three times a week. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next one soon.